These are not a pair of Levi's. They're a pair of jeans like Levi's used to be. They're a pair of jeans that Levi's should be. But yeah, they're not a pair of Levi's. Now, I'm going to get into why these are like Levi's should be at the end of the video. But first, we've actually got to look into what these jeans really are. And yeah, if you want to skip just to that part, there's a chapter thing down in the description below, so you can just click on that. But actually, hang around here because this part's going to be interesting. This is a pair of Warehouse Lot 1003XX denim jeans. I bought them from, from Will Varnum, that's at Rugged Style over on Instagram, I put his handle here. Yeah, I bought them from Will, he's selling off a bunch of stuff just now because he's doing what I'm apparently incapable of doing and he's getting himself into shape. He's lost quite a lot of weight and is selling off all of his bigger clothes. Lucky for me, I'm his bigger size. Now, I've got no idea how long Will had these jeans, how many wear days he put into them, how many washes that they've had. But there's just, there's no question, the fades in these are incredible. They're what I call vintage fades, because I think that they've got much more in common with like the, the really authentic vintage Levi's from way back in the day, the kind of thing that's just pulled out of a mine somewhere. So like much lower contrast compared to the sort of modern day, really high contrast, crispy fades. That, that everybody seems to be after these days. And these come from going against the going against the grain, going against the established wisdom when it comes to salvage denim jeans, which is basically you just wash the things quite regularly. I mean, yeah, I can't say this for certain because I wasn't around back then, but I'm pretty sure when the workers were going down the mines or out in the plains herding the cattle or whatever they did, when they were Doing that, I'm pretty sure the last thing on their mind was sick fades. And if they didn't wash them, I'm pretty sure it was just because they didn't have particular regular access to soap and water. Can't really say why, but these days I'm much more of a fan of these vintage looking fades than I am of the high contrast ones. And it could be that maybe I just saw too many of the sick high contrast fades or I'm just more leaning towards the everyday practicalities of wearing denim. I mean, even in the last year or so that's changed. I mean, if you look back at the fake competition that I did with TCB, my opinion was that wear for at least six months with, without washing. And uh, that's pretty much changed. I mean, I do everything that I tell you guys not to do. I, I wash at high temperatures and I wash often. Anyway, why don't we first take a look at the details of these jeans and then let's, let's take a look at the fades. These are a pretty interesting pair of jeans. And don't worry, I'm wearing pants. I mean, even though it's 38 degrees here in Berlin today, I do want to keep this channel at least a little way decent. So yeah, these are a very, very interesting pair of jeans. As I said, they're the Warehouse and Co. 1003XX, and they are based on a pair of jeans from 1946. Now I've talked in a previous video about just how the, the wartime rationing affected the manufacture of jeans because of the scarcity of materials and all the materials that were being produced, they had to go to, towards the war effort. So there is one jean in the Levi's, Levi's Vintage Clothing lineup, the 1944, that is um, a replica or a reproduction of the jeans of that time. And you find things like they couldn't afford the thread to do the arcs, that was seen as being superfluous, so they painted it on. They used whatever they had lying around for pocket bags, so it was a mishmash of different materials. They did away with the, the crotch rivet and the the rivets on the coin pocket. In fact, the crotch rivet never actually returned. Uh, what else did they do? They reduced the thread color to one thread color, and then they used standard laurel leaf buttons as well. And they also, on the rivets that remained, I think they were just universal rivets. They weren't actually branded Levi's. But yeah, the war ended, the restrictions were lifted, but there was a transition period when things were, were getting back to normal. And these jeans here, they're based on a pair of jeans from that transition period, so from 1946. 
So these are a bit of a mishmash between the, the old school pre-war genes and the wartime rationing genes. So the, the rivets on the coin pocket are still missing and the rivet in the crotch is still missing. In fact, that would never return, as I said. There are no arcs on the back pocket. Now, I had a look online and the other warehouse code genes that are on a Japanese website, they've got the warehouse code arcs and a red tab. Levi's got a little bit funny and started suing a lot of people that used a red tab and a similar arc that was back in the, I think, late 2000s, late noughties. They got a bit funny about that and the Japanese brands left it off. So I'm not too sure if these are just a pair of jeans from this time or they left it off on purpose. So I don't know about that. There is one color of thread used throughout the jeans instead of the two. And then the pocket bags, they are made out of, well, I don't know if that's either like a lightweight denim or a heavyweight chambray. And then there's another thing that is common to the jeans that were made during the wartime. And that is a slightly haphazard way of construction. I can only assume that the, the, the highly qualified tailors they had, or not tailors, but manufacturers of clothing, seamstresses, whatever. I can only assume that they were busy making uniforms and, and war stuff. And then the guys making the jeans, maybe they weren't as, at least at the beginning, as highly skilled. So yeah, you, you find quite a lot of, of inconsistencies, of messy stitching, of like things being done differently, not so, just a little bit lower in quality as you found before. And this is, this, these inconsistencies are reflected kind of nicely in these jeans. Just the, I, I only see it in one place and I th I'm pretty sure this is intentional, but the belt loops are proved on in on are put on in a pretty haphazard way. Now, I know Japanese manufacturing, I know Japanese denim makers, they don't do anything by accident. They're definitely not this sloppy. So I think that they have just, this is a, a nod of the head homage to the fact that these jeans back in the day were made a little bit haphazard, a little bit sloppy. But the, the buttons, they are all branded. And then, they're, so they're not the laurel leaf ones. And then the rivets as well, they are all, yeah, they are all Warehouse Co. branded. Even the back plate of the rivets and the hidden rivets, they're Warehouse Co. branded. But these do represent a pretty interesting little niche in denim history. And yeah, we're gonna get to the denim as soon as I finish doing this. Okay, the denim. The denim was specifically made for warehouse or by warehouse for these jeans. It is a little bit over 14 ounces. I imagine after the shrink, it is a little bit over 14 ounces. And it's made by a 6.7, 6.6 warp weft. And I just read that, I have zero idea what that means. And also something that I don't know what it means, but it sounds very impressive and I want to get this right. So by performing the refining process before rope dyeing with water room temperature, instead of the general high temperature, the medium white thread clearly leaves white in the center of the thread, fully reproducing the warp thread of vintage denim of the 1940s. There we go. Again. No clue, but it makes a very nice denim. And as I said, this is exactly what I think of when I think of vintage faded denim. It's got this very, very saturated blue tone to it. That underlying red tone that's associated with, with synthetic indigo and also Levi's denim, that's gone because they're so faded out. But it's also not that electric blue that I associate with the with the denim from a little bit later in Levi's history. The yellow stitching that's used throughout, that has bedded in beautifully with this faded denim. And the only place that the yellow thread is not used is the buttonholes. And that is kind of a, a greenish, blackish thread. It looks good, the buttonholes are solid, even after all the time that we'll obviously put into wearing these. And then there is some really, really nice whiskering going on just around about, around about the crotch area. I mean, it's, it's definitely not high contrast. They're very, very parallel, the lines, and that just, 
it speaks to, to the slightly wider fit so you don't get like tight bunching around about the crotch. And actually, if I'm just looking at this, the thread that runs down the fly here, that looks to be of a different gauge than the, the rest of the yellow thread and also possibly, possibly a different color. Okay, so there is two tones of stitching used in these jeans. So also, yeah, I think that might be used on the pockets as well. Okay, so scrap what I said earlier. And sticking with the pockets, uh, do you want to see the coolest thing that I've ever seen in terms of fades in a pair of jeans? Faded, faded pocket bags. The pocket bags literally have whiskering on them. Over to the coin pocket, there's no zippo fades because as I said, it was Will fading these in. I guess he doesn't smoke. Nor do I, but I always think that you should have you should have the ability to cut a piece of string and also to set fire to things when you need it. And so a zippo is very important. I sound like a pyromaniac psycho. Right, zippo fades. No zippo fades. Uh, ooh. The coin pocket is coming off a little bit here. I'll have to get my needle and thread out or find somebody with a needle and thread to get out. And then the rivets here, they have patinaed up really nicely. You can see a little bit of the the fabric or the, the cotton that's poked through when you stamp the rivet in and the buttons, the buttons look, the buttons could be brand new to be honest. They look good though. Then down to the thigh, there is a little bit of variation in color, but really not too much. There's not so much in the knee fades, but there are some really, really nice train tracks that have come out running down the outer seam that come from, from the selvage edge where it's folded over. And then if we continue down towards the bottom of the jeans, towards the hem, there are a couple, I think on both sides, yeah, there's a couple of vertical fade lines here that I first thought came from washing without turning them inside out, which you should never do. Uh, I first thought it came from washing without turning inside out, but what I actually think has happened, like when these have shrunk down, there's been so much leg twist, you can really see that the, the selvage edge here on the, the left hand leg that's twisted towards the front by a good four or five centimeters. So like this line here is where the jeans actually have their, their outside edge. It's not the, the outer, outer seam, but it's the outside edge. And there's just been a fade that's running down that part. Will has hemmed the jeans at some points. It's, it's done with a chain stitch, it's done very, very well. But there's also, there's little to, to no roping. I'm not quite sure why this is. Maybe did a little bit later after the shrink. So there, there wasn't that, that twist. Or the, the folded over bit here, whatever you call that. That is a little bit wider than I'm used to seeing when you get some heavy roping. So that might have something to do with it. And then the selvage ID that is yellow. And I believe that's the, the color of choice for warehouse. Back up to the top and over to the back. The leather patch is, is quite a thin leather. I don't really know what it is. It might be goatskin, might be sheepskin, but it's, it's very thin, very, very malleable. Um, it's still got, the logo's still there. I can't say this is patinaed up particularly. The design's faded off a little bit. You can still make out the lot 1003XX and then the size as well. On the back pockets, you are seeing a tiny little sign of, of, of wallet fade, but then this is something that I've never managed to achieve in a pair of jeans myself because they always fall apart elsewhere before this shows up. But there's actually poke through from the hidden rivets. This happens when, yeah, the, the rivets are hidden. The reason they were hidden is because they had that sharp burr that was tearing up motorbike seats or saddles or, or, or your grandmother's furniture. She wasn't too happy about that. So Levi's decided to make all the grannies happy. They covered up the rivets, but over time with wear, just like they would have scratched your saddles, they scratched their way through the denim. And so you get like these, the, this wear around about where the rivets are on the sort of the, the inner butt part of the seat. Here we can again see the slightly sloppy bar tacks, but sloppy on purpose bar tacks. The, the one, the one around the front here is like the, the worst culprit. That's, that's really messy, I like it. Okay, so that's it for the features. That's it for, for the fades. So we come to the question now, why are these like Levi's or why are these like Levi's should be? Or actually, let's put it this way. Why are these like Levi's vintage clothing should be? The whole point of Levi's vintage clothing is to, to look at the brand's history, to look at its past, which is a very, very long, very illustrious history. 
to look at that and to, to take inspirations from certain times, certain movements, certain cultural shifts, to take inspiration from that and build a collection around about those, those times, those happenings, and the pieces of, of clothing that Levi's could really identify were, were part of that, or that they could imagine were part of that. And within these collections, of course, they lean on the, the particular iterations of the 501 gene at whatever time they're looking at. But the problem is this. All the things that really made them particularly special in the world of raw denim, those have been eroded of late. They've been eroded so much that I find it quite hard to justify the, the really the premium price tag that they put on their jeans. The denim is no longer white oak, it's no longer made in the US. I mean, okay, this really, they're not to blame for this. White oak did shut down and therefore Levi's had to look elsewhere. They looked to Japan to source their denim. And the pieces themselves, they're no longer sewn together in the US. I believe they're, they're made in Turkey. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe so. Then the range of denim items themselves, the iterations of the 501s, that seems to have been slipped down significantly. And at the same time, the prices have really gone up. Now, I should turn the lights off because it's getting really bright in here. Now, now I have absolutely zero issue with the denim being manufactured in Japan. As we all know, Japan just makes, makes some of the best denim in the world. And I also have absolutely no issue with the manufacturing being done in Turkey. But the denim does seem to be one denim across the board instead of there being specific denims made for specific models of the 501. And also, I imagine the, the economies of scale that Levi's are working with in, in somewhere like Turkey, a place that's set up for clothing manufacture. I imagine those economies of scale mean that the the price per unit, the cost per unit is significantly lower. So the whole made in the USA thing, that's, that's gone away. And certainly in terms of the, the Levi's vintage clothing part of the, the, the bigger Levi's brand, I think that was fundamental to LVC. And then, I, this is all supposition. I, I, this is all just presumption. I presume that they're saving money by using one denim or what I what I think is one denim across the whole range and then also I again I presume that they're saving money by by manufacturing in Turkey and yet the prices have gone up and this is the point there are brands out there like Warehouse and and a lot of others there are brands out there that are dedicated to making jeans and and other denim items exactly like they, they were back in the day, exactly the same concept as LVC. Levi's did have a couple of, of unique selling points, as in like that, that specific white oak denim and the, the, the history of the golden handshake with white oak, and then the, the US manufacture. And also the brand name, let's not forget about the importance of that. But now they only have that brand name. And I really do not believe in paying for just a brand name. Now, all of this is not me just shitting on Levi's. I, I actually, I really do love Levi's as a brand, and in particular, of course, the Levi's Vintage Clothing. I mean, we've seen Levi's Vintage Clothing in the last couple of seasons. They've taken an entirely different and very interesting direction with their collections. I mean, I've done a, a video, I've done a couple of videos of that. I've put links up in the corners to those. Yeah, so they've taken an entirely different direction, but what I wanted to talk about today was, was specifically denim. And in that, in my opinion, there are better, much better options out there, in my opinion. And that is why these are a pair of Levi's, like Levi's should be, in my opinion. You notice that I've been saying this is my opinion a lot, right? This is really just my opinion. This is my perspective on this whole thing. And please don't sue me, Levi's, you've got, um, You've got quite the reputation for that. And despite everything, I, I do still love you. And after all that groveling and ass kissing, that just leaves me to say, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. Actually, this is, this is, I'm, I'm very happy about this. The other day, I've been on a waiting list for the vaccine for I don't know how long, but I got a phone call. They were just like, hey, somebody stepped out. If you can be here in an hour, you get a vaccine. So I got a vaccine. First day, I like I had it in the morning, I was feeling, I felt like I had a really, really bad hangover for the rest of the day. 
Next day, arm was a little bit sore. And then by the, the second day, I was feeling absolutely fine. Like really no problem at all. So yeah, I, I hope everyone is, is getting access to that out there. Like I really, I hope you do. And yeah, so as I was saying, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. And I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of each other. And we'll see you in the next video.